We got a Cimarron. <laughs> Batjack JW here, and we have a Cimarron. And let's see. Yeah, we got a Model P seven and or uh, not a uh, four and three quarter, <laughs> thirty-eight forty. And so let's check it out. Let's open it up here. Uh, there's gonna be some stuff we're gonna talk about in this video about this thing. And uh, I never had a thirty-eight forty. This is the very first thirty-eight forty I've ever owned. So, that of course all the uh, books and all that stuff here. The I remember uh, Cimarron actually used to give you a nice little uh, a zipper bag kind of case, uh, much like this. But now they got the the box, which is fine. I don't care. Uh, let's see. Here's some loads that I had uh, some load data for it because if you're gonna do 3840, you're gonna have to load for it. You could buy it, but it's kind of pricey. And, of course, the infamous sticker that they give you. It looks like it's changed up a little bit. But, uh, of course, now you guys know I have a couple of Cimarron's uh, from the past. And it's uh, both of my other ones are in 45 uh, Colts. So, here it is. Of course, it uh, didn't come with those grips. It came with these. I switched the grips out. You guys know I'm a big fan of the uh, John Wayne yellow grips. So, yeah, that's just my style. That's my thing. That's beautiful thing about being a human right <laughs> we can pick our own stuff so really cool all right overall the finish is nice i've shot it uh this thing in 3840 for whatever reason is a really really cool accurate cartridge uh, a lot more accurate than me and i'm not a very good shot and i can hit pretty well with it I don't know how well you can see the stampings, but there it says caliber, now 3840 right there. It's got the uh, cool little uh, patent stamping right there. And on the top here, it says the uh, Cimarron. Uh, of course, now they're the importer. This is a, a Uberti or a Pieta, one of the two. I wonder if it actually says it on there. Um, this one here is a Uberti. Yeah, so, beautiful... Uh, you know, the, what the uh, color case hardening style right there. Um, I was having a little bit of an issue with one of these screws coming out, but I just tightened it up, and it seems to be fine. You know, still traditional with the firing pin right there, and uh, not a bad trigger. Now, I did, uh, I switched out my, uh, my main spring in there for a Wolf uh, lighter spring, so that's what I did. Uh, just to, the action now is a lot. When you do that, that action does smooth up a, smooth up some. It's not going to be no uh, Bob London action or anything like that by far, but uh, you know it'll it'll lighten it up and it'll do some nice uh, touches to it. Uh, if you are going to reduce the power in your uh, spring, there you want to roll with uh, Federal primers because they're the softest to get yourself a strike. Now let's look at the cartridge. Okay, uh, again, I've never messed with this before. This is the first time for me, first time for a bottleneck cartridge and reloading. I've always dealt with straight wall stuff. So you can see it bottlenecks down. It's a, In a sense, it's a 4440 cartridge bottleneck down to a 401 bullet, which is a 40 caliber. There you can see it. Uh, one I have one loaded. That's a polymer jacketed bullet, a 180 grain. That's what I got. And I got those from Badman Bullets. Go ahead and check out badmanbullets.com. A uh, thousand pieces, ships absolutely free. It's a veteran owned company, so I gotta love that and gotta love supporting a vet. And, you know, he's a really cool dude to deal with. It's a, you know, really a mom and pop kind of operation. So uh, when you call him or deal with him, you're dealing with the man himself. So I got to give props here. Yeah, that's due. And you can't go wrong with his prices. And these uh, polymer bullets seem to be running really well. For me especially, uh, you know, the accuracy I'm getting out of it is uh, um, amazing. So, and I got some other videos on my uh, channel there. He's splitting playing cards and whatnot. But interesting uh, cartridge. It looks really cool. Uh, I like it. It's uh, It really looks neat. Now... I'm going to say this right up front. If you're going to get into this, you're going to have to want to do this. I've never ran into more issues reloading a cartridge than I have with 3840. It's definitely been an adventure. I've documented it on my radio show, talked a lot about it. Uh, it's definitely 
it's something that oh, you got to really want to do this. So let's go ahead and tear this thing down. Uh, so, you know, you got the base pin that comes out. Let's pop the cylinder out. Of course, it's a little dirty. I've shot it. I mean, let's uh, take a look inside the frame. Now, I don't know if the Model P's or whatever is different, but, you know, sometimes I've noticed with the, some of the other ones I got, the, like the Frontier model or whatnot, it was a little rough on here. Now, I'm not saying that this was like totally smooth or anything, but it's less rough than what I've noticed. And you'll notice also sometimes you'll see some revolvers like this with scratches, like faint scratches going down the sides of the cylinder. That's usually from it dragging on a burr or something right here. You can take like an emery file for like fingernails and just kind of smooth it up a little bit. Also, I noticed uh, with my other ones, the inside here was a little rough which this one's not bad at all. I may uh, may polish it up a little bit, but really it's not necessary. It's really actually uh, really happy with the fit and finish on this one. It's really good. So not bad at all. And a uh, cylinder has the uh, this part that comes out. My other ones don't. They're fixed in there. Um, I guess to get the Ford to end uh, fitting correctly, it's uh, easier to fit this than it is to we have to redo the entire cylinder I guess if you mess that up <laughs> so let's go ahead and put it back in we'll just fumble around here with it with on the camera of course right now if you're familiar with Cimarron's you'll notice one thing is different if you notice on that base pin there was no uh, uh, let's go ahead and pull it back out so you can see it on the base pin you'll notice there's only one traditional notch the way it was. Um, now, that this is a good and bad thing. Uh, right away, I'm going to tell you, when I first had this thing and I was messing with it, I was very disappointed. Uh, they have now incorporated something called a, I've heard it being called the different things, uh, a retracting firing pin, a floating firing pin, I don't know. But what happened was this firing pin would actually float back in, or recess back into the hammer. It has a new safety system. A lot of people have talked about it. The other thing you'll notice, it doesn't have four clicks. One, two, three. Uh, one, there we go. So it only has the three. So that first click there is going to free up the cylinder so you can turn it. Now the old ones were, you know, traditional four clicks and all that. Uh, when you tear this thing down, there's an actual, another little part that's added to the uh, trigger that pushes up on a stem that lives inside the hammer. It's actually drilled out in the middle and it lives inside that hammer. And it's a post that goes up behind the firing pin in a way kind of like a, uh, in its own concealed transfer bar, if you would. Uh, you know, of course, uh, not the uh, correct, correct terminology, but I'm just trying to explain it to you that, and it pushes the firing pin forward for it to strike the primer, all right? Um, yeah, at first it really, I was like, ah, I don't know about all that. And then what I was noticing was I was actually getting misfires and light strikes and it was actually affecting the action of the gun. Now that made me mad. So it's an easy thing, actually. You just yank it out, all the parts, and there is that rod that lives inside the hammer and it's a little pin that holds it together. I, I removed the entire system in itself. This is uh, within hindsight of saying, okay, I don't want to have to, I don't want to modify this gun to the point where now it's no longer the same. So that's one of the things. I, I wanted to be able to return it back to its factory specs. So I didn't want to do any permanent modifications to it. So here it is. Um, that's the stem and pieces and everything. And then now what I did was actually took... <laughs> I took a couple of uh, uh, punch-out pieces of uh, copper because I wanted something soft. I didn't want to, you know, I'd rather replace those. I took a, uh, a sheet metal hole puncher and cut out a couple of pieces of copper, removed the firing pin, stacked them behind it, put the firing pin back. And you're going to have to play with the, uh, the size because you want there to be a little bit of play in that firing pin. And you got to kind of, I had a reference to my other ones to kind of look at that. So that's one thing I did. So that may be a deal breaker for you with these uh, Cimarron's or, and it's going to be the same with Cimarron, 
uh, Taylors and Company or, who, or you know any of those, they're going to be the same. They get their guns from Italy; that they're all the same. So, if I was going to say something about you know to Uberti and Pieta or wherever that they're all doing this new system, get rid of it. Don't do it. You're going to start losing some business. I think a lot of people are going to be dissatisfied. But uh, I'm really happy that the modification was just like pretty minor and easy to do. You just got to strip it down and do it all. But overall, um, I'm happy with it. I like it. Uh, you know, 3840, really cool. Uh, it's I like the way, you know, it looks. It's definitely different from the uh, 45 Colt. I know some people are going to be like, man, you're really, because I stopped shooting the 45 Colt in this. I stopped shooting, I went to a 9mm 1911. Oh my gosh, what's next, right? No. But anyway, neat cartridge. I thought it was neat. This is a Starline brass I've been using. Um, you know, I've had powder issues. Uh, you really got to look at what powder you're using because I had the issue of the powder different types of powder not uh, burning up properly or whatever and then actually leaving uh, particles of powder in the chambers itself and then I was having issues with the brass not uh, you know it would, it would stick and hang up as I am you know you can see the powder is kind of stuck in there and this is using accurate number two when I first started I was using uh, blue dot do not use blue dot that doesn't work at all uh, accurate 2 doesn't seem to, it, do, it works better but doesn't work as good I'm going to be moving on over to um, probably like tight group like what they said because um, my chambers were I've actually had them reamed the first time and tried to get them fixed but it was I was getting really tight fits in there but I was noticing if you run a patch through it and then clean out the powder the you know the Cartridges are fit back in there, no problem. You could even put the empties back in there, but so I had a little bit of trouble with that because of the powder residue it's back up in there. So the other thing I was going to try was Trail Boss. Um, I'm going to try that stuff and see how that works. But anyway, that's been my little adventure with this thing. I just wanted to bring it out, talk about it, and um, yeah, that's what I'll, all I experienced with it. It's a labor of love. You really got to want to do this cartridge. Uh, if I wasn't going to want to get into all that, I would just stick with the 45 Colt and just uh, have no problems and just be with that. But I got to admit, you know, uh, it it was definitely an adventure to shoot 3840. You got to kind of want to do that cartridge. But the gun's cool. The, uh, you know, Cimarron's uh, fit and finish. I'm really happy with it. Not bad at all. But if I was going to say anything about it, Get rid of that thing. <laughs> See you guys later.